Hi again, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. Thank you again for joining us. Today we're going to take another look at the G10 shotgun slugs that the channel Tactical G Code created for us. And these have a heavy carbide core up inside the nose. Now he mostly put that there to make it more nose heavy. But if you remember from the other video, these did not perform very well. Oh, I thought you were... Shot two. Hit it. Whenever you're ready. Wow, upper right. <laughs> now we shot these out of a shotgun with a rifle choke tube. We had a lot of spin, but the spin did not stabilize the round in any way. In fact, it probably just created more problems. We recovered two of these slugs, and they were in good enough shape that we could actually shoot them again. We've always had issues with these really long slugs, so I decided to chop it off, leaving that carbide core inside there, but doing away with about two-thirds of this slug. I loaded them into these old Western brand shotgun shells. I have no idea how old these are. They could be 30 years old as far as I know. I'm willing to bet there's some viewers out there that could identify these things down to the year. The biggest difference with these old shells is they used a, a wood fiber wadding in them. Modern shells that you'd find today use a plastic wadding. But you'll see, even though they're very old, they still function very well. And yes, just like the other tests, we'll be using that rifle choke tube again. Since these two slugs have a carbide core in it, we decided to set up our old AR-500 armor plate. We got this plate a couple years ago. This is actually the front of it, the yellow side. It's been hit with so many different slugs and things, it's actually curved. Originally, this plate was perfectly flat. Now, when we filmed this, the sky was pretty dark. Not the best conditions for high-speed videography, but we'll do the best we can, so try to keep that in mind. You ready, Darren? Yeah. Okay, when you're ready, go for it. Wow. Wow. That hit with some... I see some leakage. Yeah. That was loud as hell without my earplugs. Now, the water jug had a little hole in it, and that was from a bullet fragment because the... Slug did not penetrate the plate, left a nice big dent, and the fragment made it through an existing hole somehow. Now whether or not these pierced the plate or not was kind of a secondary goal. Remember how that slug originally flew in that old video? It's pretty unlikely we would have even hit the plate when they were two inches long. So definitely that shorter shape of that slug made a big old improvement. And if you look real close, you can see that that slug is flying nose first and relatively flat. There's a little bit of whoop de doo there, but overall the performance was quite good. Okay, hit it. Oh, that was a hard hit. Pretty good. But yeah, it didn't, didn't go through. No. That was the 308 that went through, I assume. Uh, your 308 or my 308, I don't know. Yeah, the my, probably the Mosin. One of them is a 270. This this was one of the shotgun ones, this little one there. you notice that the damage from this shot is quite a bit different than the first shot. The first shot looked like it hit dead center and straight. This one looked like it may have been a little bit cattywampus. But once again, just hitting that plate with these modified slugs was a feat in itself. The overall weight of these slugs was only about half an ounce or about 14 grams. Now if you look close you can see that carbide slug streaking off to the left. That's because we set that plate at a slight angle to cause that deflection so it wouldn't fly back directly at us. That would not be good. Really this is a good test because it really proves that that short squatty traditional slug shape is really a, a good design. I think that the thick G10 nose prevented the carbide core from really doing its full damage. And if you want to see shotgun slugs designed by Tim that have pierced this plate, be sure to check out these videos. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.